Let's do a throwback clip here. This is conservative economist Milton Friedman talking to Phil Donahue about greed. When you see around the globe the maldistribution of wealth, the, the desperate plight of millions of people in underdeveloped countries, uh, when you see so few haves and so many have-nots, when you, when you see the greed and the concentration of power within, don't, aren't you ever, did you ever have a moment of doubt about capitalism? And whether greed's a good idea to run on? Well, first of all, tell me, is there some society you know that doesn't run on greed? You think Russia doesn't run on greed? You think China doesn't run on greed? What is greed? Of course, none of us are greedy. It's only the other fellow who's greedy. <laughs> this, the world runs on individuals pursuing their separate interests. The great achievements of civilization have not come from government bureaus. Einstein didn't construct his theory under order from a, from a, a bureaucrat. Henry Ford didn't revolutionize the automobile industry that way. In the only cases in which the masses have escaped from the kind of grinding poverty you're talking about, the only cases in recorded history are where they, where they have had capitalism and largely free trade. If you want to know where the masses are worth, worse off, worst off, it's exactly in the kinds of societies that depart from that. So that the record of history is absolutely crystal clear. Yeah, that's false. Well, actually, it's true, because the record of history is crystal clear, and it's not what you say. So, what's my evidence? Oh, I don't know. Scandinavia. Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, Greenland, Finland. These are all places where, objectively speaking, so according to measurements and data from the UN and the World Health Organization and others, it's clear that in all relevant categories, these places kick the ass of the rest of the world. So, for example, their healthcare systems, they're much better than the rest of the world. Okay, especially better than the United States, because we don't even have a single-payer system. So they have socialist healthcare systems, wildly successful. They also have better education systems. They also have universal daycare, which is awesome. And that's an idea that hasn't even crossed the mind of people in the United States of America. They also have better social safety nets. So if you fall on hard times, don't worry. The taxpayers in the state are going to give you a temporary boost and let you know you're not going to starve in the street. We got your back. Okay? Not enough to the point where it's self-destruction. It's not like you're paying people $100,000 a year to sit on their fucking ass all day. Okay? But it's enough of a social safety net where they're able to then go ahead and pursue new careers, new job openings, new life paths. In the U.S., our, our social safety net is much more frugal, much more meager, and you're still kind of fucked even if you have uh, the social safety net helping you. Even when you work in the United States, a living wage is not the minimum wage. The minimum wage is less than a living wage, so you can work full-time and still live in poverty, still not be able to pay the bills. How fucking crazy is that? So he, he's wrong. Now, here's the reality. It's mixed. So what he's saying is somewhat true and somewhat false. So capitalism in general, is it a good thing? Well, it depends. In what area are we talking about having the free market and having capitalism? If you're talking about consumer goods, you're talking about making video games or making the coolest, most comfortable couch or making lamps or making, you know, DVRs or whatever. Things that, you know, are consumer goods. In that case, I'm all for capitalism, man. Do you want to talk about the coolest t-shirt, the best fashion? By all means, the capitalist system all day long. I don't want my tax dollars funding something like that. That's something that's specifically for capitalism. So yeah, what you're saying is partly true, because some areas capitalism is necessary. In other areas, it's not. In other areas, you need government. You need socialism. See, the reality is nuanced and complex and mixed. It's not all one thing or all another thing. I hate when we have these conversations like this in these black and white ways. Either capitalism or not capitalism. No, that's stupid. Sometimes the answer is capitalism, sometimes it's not capitalism. And what was that that we just saw, by the way? That was the greed is good speech before the greed is good speech. And the reality is, sometimes greed is necessary and greed makes sense, but other times it's not, and you need it does take a village. Again, it's complex, it's nuanced, it's not like he's making it seem like the answer is always capitalism and it's always free markets and it's always greed. Now, let me just answer one of his biggest claims there, uh, and we'll wrap it up on this. But he says, well, it, all the great achievements have come from individuals. It's never been collect uh, collectivism or the government or community. 
But think about how ridiculous what that what he just said is. See, look, again, we are nuanced, so we'll say, sure, in some cases it was individualism that led to these amazing accomplishments and these great achievements. Sure, absolutely. But was it sometimes government? And was it sometimes the collective? Again, absolutely. So, for example, the Marshall Plan, the New Deal, which essentially saved us from the worst, gross, Great Depression. There's a reason why FDR kept getting elected. Because people loved him because he gave them jobs and he did redistribute wealth at a time when the wealth disparity was absurd and you had a group of billionaires that had everything and the rest of America was struggling. So he said, I'm going to tax their punk asses because they didn't earn that money and then we're going to give people jobs in terms of shovel-ready projects, create infrastructure, and stop this Great Depression. So the New Deal was fantastic. The internet was created by... Uh, through government dollars that went to the Pentagon. Sure, there were individuals involved in it, but a lot of it was government funding. How about medicine? A lot of breakthroughs in medicine come from the NIH and other government-funded places. You can't... If you just had the private sector working on uh, medicine, certain things they would never have a cure for because they think the investment is too much and it takes too long to maybe get an answer. So they just say, there's not enough profit in it. I'm not going to do it. Sometimes you need the government to step in and say, we're going to go ahead and invest in X, Y, or Z because it's the right thing to do. So, look, he's partially right, but he's mostly wrong and he... he suffers from this black and white mentality, this ideology of capitalism or not, free markets or not, selfishness and greed or not. No, it's not that. It's a mix of both, and it makes sense to look at the world not through these incredibly didactic spectrums. You have to look at the world with an open mind and try to evaluate things not through an ideological perspective purely.